off the coast of Maine. Captain Daniel Phil and his crew dip into cold Atlantic waters to retrieve a treasure that flows like liquid silver. These fish may look nondescript, but they are a veritable linchpin of the world's oceans. They are herring. Under the waves, herring school together in numbers that seem to boggle the imagination. So many that scientists struggle to get an accurate count of their total population. They are a major source of food for a multitude of the world's marine animals that scoop them up with open mouths or pick them one by one from the water or stun them with a flick of the tail. For some species, herring are the staff of life. Go! Humans too have been fishing herring for centuries, perhaps millennia. Most of these fish harvested in the Atlantic will go for lobster bait and for animal food, while others will be canned as sardines. It seems this ubiquitous fish is a bountiful resource to be shared by all. But some conservationists, and even fishermen like Captain Dan, are worried that humans may be taking more than their fair share of this ocean treasure. The trawlers fish year round. They fish 24 hours a day if they can find fish. And a lot of times they'll steam for days and days and not find fish. I think the trawlers have, uh, are mainly responsible for the depletion of herring. The concern centers on this method for fishing herring. Called pair trawling, two ships tow a net between them. So large you could fit two Sydney Opera houses inside. So heavy, the nets can't be pulled on deck. Its contents are sucked into the ship with a vacuum. Supporters say it's an effective way to harvest schools of herring. Detractors say the trawlers are depleting herring in some areas and inadvertently killing other species of fish and marine animals. Nothing bigger than one and a half or two inches can escape the net because of the mesh size. The fishing pattern that, they, that these ships employ is much like plowing a field or vacuuming your carpet back and forth, back and forth, 24 hours a day until the individual schools are wiped out. It may seem difficult to believe that such a populous fish could be wiped out, but it's happened before. Foreign fishing fleets collapsed herring stocks along the Atlantic seaboard in the 1970s. Population eventually bounced back and fishing resumed. Proponents of trawlers say there's no hard evidence that herring stocks are falling again, and say the industry only takes about 10% of the Atlantic's estimated population. The conservationists worry about something called localized depletion, when a species is wiped out of one particular area. Some tuna fishermen claim that overfishing of herring by trawlers has already led to a serious drop in the local tuna that feed on them. Herring is a forage fish. It's eaten by other things in the system. It's part of a category of marine life that we think deserves special attention now because when you remove these essential pillars of the food chain, there's a tendency for other things around them to collapse. Conservationists also worry that trawlers are killing other species with their massive nets. So we're going to go through and we're going to measure every 10th fish. In a Massachusetts warehouse, they search for this so-called bycatch in a shipment of herring and find some rogue fish. So we've got a mackerel. They believe, however, this end product doesn't tell the whole story. The trawlers may actually be dumping most, if not all, of their dead bycatch long before they get to the dock to unload the herring. 27. Another major problem is that these fishermen are allowed, it's perfectly legal, for them to simply dump the contents of an entire net without ever pumping it on board if they have reason to believe it's fish they either don't want or shouldn't have. Conservation groups have tried to monitor the trawlers, but it's difficult to do from afar. In this video, you can see dozens of endangered pilot whales following a pair of trawlers to feast on herring. But only a handful of official observers are ever actually on the ships to monitor what's going on.
Instead, trawlers are supposed to report their bycatch voluntarily. We really don't know what's being thrown overboard on these ships. Here on the East Coast, these boats carry observers less than 3% of the time. This is sort of the honor system of fisheries management, or as I like to call it, the, the don't ask, don't tell policy. Trawler spokesmen vehemently deny that they're secretly dumping illegal catch and say their nets are designed to allow larger prey to escape off the sides. But Captain Dan, who has worked on a trawler, says bycatch is indeed a serious problem. Since trawler nets are so massive, everything caught inside them usually suffocates from the crush of bodies. I see a lot of waste in midwater trawling, a lot of bycatch issues. A whale will not rip through a trawl net. In a midwater trawl net, they get caught up in the vacuum of the net. There's no way out of that one for them, and they'll suffocate. They can't come to the surface because the boat is towing them around. He now prefers a potentially less lucrative, less intense method of fishing herring in a boat called a purse seine. In the person, if you got bycatch, then you can release the bycatch. And a poor person, a tuna, will generally go through the net. America's commercial fisheries are controlled by regional management boards. The Pew Environment Group is leading a campaign to have the herring quotas reassessed and to limit and closely monitor pair trawlers. For many, herring may be small fish, but they're part of a large problem we become so efficient at fishing that we may be imperiling all ocean life. What marine scientists worldwide are telling us is, is that we are essentially vacuuming the world's oceans of much of the life that they contain. The management regimes which are in place for these fish, which impose quotas on how many can be taken out of the water, really don't take into account anything else. They don't take into account the needs of seabirds or whales or marine mammals or other fish. Many believe that when it comes to this important world resource, we need to take our fair share, but nothing more. Sponsored by National Geographic Mission Programs, taking science and exploration into the new millennium.